Association, Yemenis in Guantanamo. Thank you. Yemenis in Guantanamo represented and still do represent the largest number, uh, the largest group of detainees. And out of about 158 detainees still left, that consists of around 90. It wasn't enough that these uh, men suffered physical and mental abuse even before getting to Guantanamo, but they all then went on to suffer years of torture and, and abuse, and never, and never were they charged or convicted or had any connections to any terror crimes. The US government is effectively endorsing guilt by nationality. All of the detainees has, have been subjected at some point or another to solitary confinement, although some having to endure lengthier, lengthier times than others. And the failure of the US in recognizing international law and the bigger failure of the international community to act to get the US to comply by these laws after over a decade is a frightening prospect in this so-called war on terror and nothing short of a disgrace. As most of you will be aware, the unlawfully held detainees a few months ago went on man mass hunger strikes. And although it wasn't the first of hunger strikes, and I doubt it will be the last, to me it spoke volumes. These men would rather take away one of the only necessities provided or die in try or die trying in order to get the world to listen, and most importantly, in a glimmer of hope. In a glimmer of hope so that they may gain freedom. What we must always remember is the rendition of these men to Guantanamo was on most occasions based on mere suspicions and, their, and hearsay. Where, all, where else in the world would it be accepted for someone to be guilt, deemed guilty until proven innocent due to their nationality? After years of torture and false imprisonment, the detainees still fought to prove their innocence. And even when they did so and were cleared for release, immediate release I should add, they still had to enjoy living in limbo simply because the US government, which unlawfully imprisoned them based on suspicions, were arguing that now they suspected these individuals were too damaged physically and also mentally due to the constant abuse and torture endorsed that there wasn't a safe enough rehabilitation center or environment to reintegrate them into society. Um, I'll just read out a short piece. I'll just read out a short piece um, from a recent letter from Imam Abdullah Hassan, a Yemeni national and a hunger striker for several years, now a prisoner cleared for release several years ago, yet still unlawfully detained. I won't go to read the whole letter, but I'll just say that he states the way he was tortured. He states the latest experiment is different. Now they begin with 1500 cc of formula called two cow. Four cans in the morning and four in the night, served up each time with 700 cc of water. Once I finish each meal, they fill the feed bag with 50 cc of anti-constipation medication and 450 cc of water. As this scientific study shows, at least in the experience of this guinea pig, your correspondent, this, me this, this method accelerates the stomach function and makes the hunger striker deficit on himself in the chair. I mean, I won't go into any further detail as it's <coughs> indescribably inhumane what they continue to do to him. But I'd like to also add that he states if I vomit on myself at any time during the procedure, they start the atrocity all over again. Though they don't necessarily let me wash off before it begins. I find it despicable that this sort of barbaric way of torture is someone who has been cleared for release years ago is still able to go on. I personally hold the Yemeni government just as accountable and see them just to be as complicit in the crimes committed and which continue to be committed in Guantanamo. As intervention on behalf of their innocent citizens, many who have been cleared for release by US courts should have come years ago. And although there have been reports that the US government and the Yemeni government are negotiating and the Yemeni president has quite rightfully said we believe that keeping someone in detention for over 10 years without due, pro without due process is clear-cut tyranny, tyranny. I still find it preposterous that the US can actually have conditions of release for what is detaining, detaining lawful human rights. 
One of the most highlighted cases was the unfortunate suspicion, was the unfortunate death, a uh, so-called suicide, although I find it, and many do find it suspicious death of Adnan Latif, a mentally disturbed detainee as most doctors and reports described him, whose death has aroused dozens of unanswered questions. Like most detainees, he was never charged with a crime and was cleared for release a few times. Yet even after numerous reports deemed his rendition to only be worsening his mental stability, he was still not released. It seems the US government has normalized injustice in the name of the war on terror, while the whole world watches and continues to be silent. As I watched a report of, as I watched the report of Adnan al Burley arriving back home to Yemen to at last be put to rest after three months' wait, I couldn't help but think the stories of the men of Guantanamo will go far beyond the walls of Guantanamo. That day I saw some break, break down after seeing his father for the first time. A family bid farewell to hope of a semi-normal life, and yet another family brewing with grief and I no doubt resentment to the, to the US's so-called justice. I would like to conclude with just the last few lines of Adnan Latif's poem where he says, where is the world to save us from torture? Where is the world to save us from the fire and sadness? And where is the world to save the hunger strikers? But we are content on the side of justice and right, worshipping the Almighty and our motto on this land is Salaam. Thank you very much for everyone for campaigning and being here. And I hope we're not here next year.